Hello everyone, welcome to another video from Shomu's Biology. In this video lecture, we are going to talk about glycolysis regulation or regulation of glycolysis. The regulation of enzymatic reactions are very similar in the metabolic pathways inside of a cell. Whether you take glycolysis, you take gluconeogenesis, you take TCA cycle or Krebs cycle. In all these cases, the process works very similarly, starting with a substrate and the substrate is converted to the product by the activity of some enzyme. So that is enzymatic reaction and this enzymatic reaction can be regulated by three different processes by the substrate concentration, by product concentration and by the presence of an allosteric regulator. So if the substrate concentration is high, let's say the substrate can be glucose or acetyl-CoA depending upon the pathway. For example, glucose is a substrate for glycolysis, acetyl-CoA is a substrate for TCA cycle and the product can be pyruvate for glycolysis, citrate is also as a further product of glycolysis or the part of the TCA cycle. And in all these processes as these are catabol uh, catabolic reactions, we are producing energy as ATP and also we are producing NADH and FADH2 in reduced form as a result of the redox reactions catalyzed by dehydrogenase enzymes. So all these enzymatic pathways are regulated in three different ways, substrate clearance, product inhibition and allosteric regulation. Substrate clearance is when the substrate concentration is high, then substrate is going to positively influence the enzymatic reaction. And this is known as substrate clearance model. On the other hand, if the product concentration is high, it's always going to negatively influence the enzymatic reaction. We call it product inhibition. And finally, we have allosteric regulator molecule, which can bind to allosteric site of the enzyme and can either positively or negatively regulate the enzyme activity to convert substrate into product. Now we'll see how exactly this regulation works. Glycolysis and gluconeogenesis follow the same set of reactions with very similar set of enzymes. Only three different reaction stages are there where the glycolysis differs from gluconeogenesis. That is uh, the step number one, step number uh, three and step number ten. So in these three different sections, three different reactions, that is reaction number 1, 3 and 10, glycolysis is being regulated, gluconeogenesis is being regulated. We'll see the regulation of glycolysis and regulation of gluconeogenesis now. Start with, uh, so for the glycolysis process, we start with glucose and the glucose gets converted to glucose 6 phosphate by attaching a phosphate group to the 6th carbon. So then the glucose 6 phosphate is converted to fructose 6 phosphate. In this very first process of conversion of glucose to glucose 6-phosphate, as glucose 6-phosphate is a product, that product inhibits the process of glucose's conversion to glucose 6-phosphate. While in gluconeogenesis, the same glucose 6-phosphate positively influence because glucose 6-phosphate in gluconeogenesis acts as a substrate. And in that case, glucose 6-phosphate acts as a positive influencer. Remember, the regulation of glycolysis can be done by product inhibition substrate clearance and allosteric regulation. If the product is present, the product in this case is uh, the ultimate downstream intermediate, then that's going to inhibit. If substrate concentration is high, that's going to positively influence. NADH, FADH2 is going to inhibit. NAD plus is going to positively influence. ATP, as we are producing energy through glycolysis, then ATP is going to inhibit. AMP and ADP is going to positively influence. The next step is the conversion of fructose 6-phosphate into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. The, the forward reaction in glycolysis is carried out by phosphofructokinase, while in the gluconeogenesis, it's done by fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase enzyme. Now here, the phosphofructokinase enzyme, which is the enzyme converting fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, is under the regulation. And Fructose 2,6-bisphosphate is going to positively influence this reaction. AMP is going to positively influence this step. While ATP negatively regulates citrate as citrate is a downstream product, it's going to negatively influence and proton concentration also negatively influence this particular step. On the other hand, in gluconeogenesis site, conversion from fructose 1,6-bisphosphate to fructose 6-phosphate by fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase, this fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase can be positively influenced by the presence of citrate as citrate is a downstream product. In case of gluconeogenesis, citrate becomes a substrate. 
Now the rest of the steps are simple. So here A N P is going to negatively influence fructose two six B phosphate is going to negatively influence fruit the fructose one six B phosphatase enzyme. So basically the reversal of that of the glycolysis. Obviously, as glycolysis is going forward, so the substrate in glycolysis will be product in gluconeogenesis, and the substrate in gluconeogenesis will be product in glycolysis. Then comes the interconversion stages, multiple stages pass by, and finally it produces phosphoenol pyruvate (PEP). Phosphoenol pyruvate is converted to pyruvate by pyruvate kinase enzyme. While the conversion of pyruvate to phosphoenol pyruvate requires two additional enzymes. Conversion of pyruvate into oxaloacetate by pyruvate carboxylase and oxaloacetate into phosphoenol pyruvate by phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase. Now let's look at the influence here. The conversion of phosphoenol pyruvate to pyruvate done by pyruvate kinase, and in this case, fructose one six bisphosphate acts as an influencer because fructose one six bisphosphate is an upstream substrate element, so that acts as an influencer. And again, we are producing ATP, so ATP. Will be negatively influencing this whole process, and alanine also negatively influence the conversion of phosphoenol pyruvate into pyruvate. On the other hand, acetyl CoA positively influences the conversion of pyruvate to oxaloacetate, but ADP negatively influences. Similarly, ADP or AMP negatively influences the conversion of oxaloacetate into phosphoenol pyruvate in the gluconeogenesis site. So in this case, the easy way to remember is simply think of the idea. If substrate is more, it's going to positively influence. So all this case, fructose two six bisphosphate AMP acts as that. And if the ultimate product that is citrate ATP is more, it's going to negatively influence. And as these things are present in the glucose or glycolytic pathway, then obviously in gluconeogenesis will be reverse and opposite. So that is the regulation of glycolysis. The regulation is. substrate clearance the regulation is product inhibition and the regulation is allosteric regulation in all these cases the allosteric regulation can be done by alanine just in this case it can be done by citrate in this case okay so that's all about regulation of glycolysis if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel to get more videos like that in future thank you bye